Beloved people of God, this is the day the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship on this 21st Sunday after Pentecost. For those who will worship using the recording, welcome to Faith Lutheran's worship service. My name is Jane, Jane Baker, and I have the privilege of serving this faith community. During the live service on Zoom, if you have a prayer request, please go ahead and type that in the chat box, and then I'll include it in the prayers. Please remember to give your offering, either via mail, or you can drop it by the church during office hours, or online, or through the church website, or however you do that. And thank you so much for your generous and ongoing support of Faith's Ministries. If you'd like more information about Faith Lutheran Church, you can contact us through the church website at faithroseburg.org. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome. We are a church that shares a living, daring confidence in God's grace. Liberated by our faith, we embrace everyone as a whole person with questions, doubts, complexities, and all. We are moved by God's grace to welcome all who have ever felt marginalized, no matter your gender, identity, sexual orientation, age, race, ethnicity, marital status, or faith background. We welcome you as we worship, learn, and share Christ's love together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, sometimes we confess that we would rather have the easy answers. Sometimes we feel like a, a yes or a no would be better than a wait and see or a learning experience. We confess that at times we rush to be answered instead of letting ourselves wonder in the mystery that is you. Remind us that love is enough. And when we forget, remind us again. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Believe the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and set free from the power of sin, and we are given new life. Amen. The first reading this morning is from the book of Job, the 38th chapter. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm, and he said, Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstones while the morning stars sang together? And all the angels shouted for joy. Can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water? Do you send lightning bolts on their way? Do they report to you, here we are? Who gives the ibis wisdom? Or gives the rooster understanding? Who has the wisdom to count the clouds? Who can tip over the water jars of heaven when the dust becomes hard and the clods of earth stick together? Do you hunt the prey for the lioness and satisfy the hunger of the lions when they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in a thicket? Who provides food for the raven when its young cry out to God and wander about for lack of food? Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, 
what is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the 10 heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers are lorded over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whomever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for the many. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, thanks be to God. Grace to you in peace from God, our creator, from Jesus, our savior, and from the Holy Spirit, our advocate. Amen. When I was working as a hospital chaplain during seminary for my clinical training, I visit people who try to convince me that they are not mad at God, even though their lives had been eviscerated by tragedy or loss or injury or disease. For some reason, they always had to let the chaplain know that. But you see, holding God's feet to the fire and asking, why have you abandoned me, is not a sin. The Hebrew scriptures are a great place to find stories of God's people doing just that. And there's no better place to look in the Old Testament than at the book of Job. Now, if you need a refresher, Here's Job 101. God and the character called the accuser, who is not the devil, by the way, they're up in heaven, and the accuser thinks that Job only loves God because Job has tons of money, lots of children, many friends, and he enjoys good health. And that's why he's so good, and that's why he loves God, says the accuser. So God bets the accuser that if all that were taken away from Job, that Job would still love God. So Job, the butt of a divine bet, loses everything, despite the fact that he is the most upstanding, righteous guy around. He's like a combination of, you know, Mr. Rogers and Jimmy Carter. But his righteousness doesn't matter. His wife and all his children die. He goes completely bankrupt. His health is shot and his friends desert him. He is convinced that God has abandoned him. This is pretty much one of the most disturbing stories in the Bible. Now to understand how Job got here, we sort of have to look at what he's been dealing with from his so-called friends. First, his friend Eliphaz, who apparently sees God as the fixer, he's like, come on, Job, if you just submit to God, if you have enough faith in God, God will fix all this. And then there's Bildad, his friend who sees God as the judge. He says, well, Job, you must have done something wrong. I mean, after all, God is fair and just. So God only gives you what you deserve. And then finally, his buddy Zophar. Zophar seems to be saying that, well, you probably deserved even worse. 
But where is God? And all this is happening to Job. God is silent. Nothing. God has zip to say to Job. And on and on, this blaming and whining and ranting and raving goes on for 37 chapters until chapter 38, when God finally speaks. And by the way, yes, God tested Job and also tested Abraham by commanding him to sacrifice his son. Remember that story? So it raises the question if God really does indeed test us as well. See, in both cases, the biblical story suggests no. Both Job and Abraham have proved themselves faithful. And as a result, their characters become valuable for future communities of faith. Both Abraham as the father of Israel and Job as the patriarch of integrity pass their tests that ends such testing for future generations. That God resolves never again to require the murder of children as a test of faith is rooted in the promise of grace given in response to their admirable actions by a compassionate God who feels remorse. So no, when bad things happen, God is not testing us. Now Job seems to move from apparent acceptance to what is happening to him, to lamenting about what has happened, to an out and out challenge of God and God's power in his life. He demands answers now and seeks justice as due to him. And I think this is the part of the Job story that we really identify with. We want answers. We want answers now. But Job doesn't even seem to be able to find God in order to register his grievance. Job's biggest complaint is that he feels that God has deserted him. 37 chapters of Job ranting and raving <laughs> and terrible things happening to him. No word from God. Even with that, though, Job still desperately wants to connect with his God. So what does Job really want from God? And what are the questions he strives to articulate? He wants to know what all of us want to know at times at times like during this pandemic. Where is God in all of this? But in the book of Job, God does not respond to Job, remember, for 37 chapters. Now beyond the tragedy of the pandemic that began in late 2019 and is still ravaging the world into late 2021, beyond the political side of COVID, and then whining and ranting and raging about mask wearing and vaccines. Isn't that what we as Christians really long to know? Where is God in all of this? And I say is, not was, because we know where God has been in the last 22 months as people lay in ICUs gasping for air. And last year when we were burying loved ones while desperately waiting for a vaccine against this horrible virus, God was, God was with them, holding them close, claiming each of them as God's own, and guiding those whose lives were taken to God's self. Now, some will reject that. Others will take the hand of God to a place where there is no pain or sorrow and where they are safe and well in God's presence. That's the promise. And we know this, and we believe this. And we stake our lives on this. But what about the question, where is God now in all of this? See, I think that's the harder question because we've been, we have measures that are known to help prevent the spread of the virus and keep people out of hospitals and out of morgues. But these measures are being rejected by many and people are still needlessly suffering and dying. I had a conversation this week where a person said that God told her to not get the vaccine. 
So where is God now in the midst of the misinformation and the suffering and the anger and our impatience and the tragedy in this community and beyond? Well, God is evident in many ways. And I've seen God in the heartfelt ways that our community has stood with each other despite our political and social differences. For instance, God is present in the opening of people's hearts to be generous to organizations that serve families like the Fish of Roseburg Food Pantry and You Can and the Boys and Girls Club and this church and so many more. This community has supported our exhausted, weary, overwhelmed, physically, mentally, and emotionally frontline healthcare workers by at times bringing them food and having you know, caterers drop off food or placing gift cards on their windshields or leaving notes of appreciation. That's a beautiful God thing. So how else have we seen God present during the pandemic here in Roseburg? Well, there's been a lot of both good and bad behavior on the parts of many adults in this community. Well, what has really been impressive is how the kids have behaved. For the most part, no ranting, no disrespect, no name calling. They stayed at home to do school when they had to. Now, back to school, they just put on their mask, go to school like it's the most completely normal thing in the world to do. And they're just thankful to be with their friends and with their teachers. Young people have also stepped up, risking their lives at times to stand with those affected by police brutality. And they've also continued the fight for climate justice during the pandemic. And they've helped neighbors with yard work and shopping. Young people have stepped up and done the right thing in so many ways. You see, this is what hope looks like. Chapter 38 of Job, Out of the Storm. God finally comes down and speaks to Job. After the noise of humans trying to sound like they understand God and God's supposed system of rewards and punishments, and after countless chapters of this, God finally comes down from out of the whirlwind and says to Job, who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I want to question you and you shall answer me. In other words, why do you talk so much when you don't seem to know so much? This is where God gets a little snarky, and I kind of totally love that. God demands, where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Tell me, tell me if you understand. As in, okay, smarty pants, I'd like to see you try to run the world. This is where the Almighty tells us once again. Um, let me remind you, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. God reminds us that God is under no obligation to act within our expectations, nor does God have to adhere to our timeline. Only God could be behind the kids we worry so much about, who are behaving better than a lot of adults these days. God is with us. I know that because of the love and generosity I've seen expressed by this faith community and beyond. There is hope and there is God. Even though many of us are angry or fearful and impatient, and perhaps even mad at God, and it is totally okay to be mad at God. I know too the power of gathering and experiencing the power of liturgy and hymns and prayers and the body and blood of Christ shared. Yes, we all want answers. Even while, even, you know, we just, we want answers. When will this global pandemic be over? And like in the Job story, the answers will come, but not on our timeline. To assume that God's silence means that God is not present is to miss the amazing things that God can do and is doing. Did you catch it in the gospel reading last Sunday? Jesus declared for mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. God in Christ has never abandoned us, even when we've done our worst. On a Friday, on a hill, on a cross. 
and God will never forsake us. That's the promise that gets us through times like this and times at other times in our life when things are really, really, really hard. Amen. As we gather in our homes yet together as one community, let us pray for the needs of the world, responding to each prayer petition with God in your mercy, hear us. The readers will say, and together we pray, and the congregation response is, God, in your mercy, hear us. Holy One, for the gift of the church handed down through the ages, and for all who carry on the servant ministry of Jesus, we praise you. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, all who are discerning calls to ministry in its many forms, and equip them with your gifts. And together we pray, God in your mercy, hear us. Creating one for the lush and abundant habitat you provide for all your creatures, we praise you. Provide healing for the earth so that waterfowl, reptiles, wild horses, dolphins, and all the living things flourish as you intended. And together we pray, God in your mercy, hear us. Suffering one, for all who work towards peace and who lead nations with a servant's heart, we praise you. Bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, oppression, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and homelessness and create places of refuge for all people. And together we pray, God, in, God your, in your mercy, mercy hear mercy. us. Sustaining one, strengthen healthcare workers on the front lines of the pandemic, fortify all those who work in transportation and the supply chain so that goods globally can reach all who need them. Give us patience as we wait for this pandemic to end. Thank you for the reminder that it is you who is in charge and that you are with us and will strengthen us accordingly. Thank you for the COVID vaccines, booster shots, and treatments you have provided. And together we pray, God in your mercy, hear us. Merciful one, for all who do the work of healing in mind, body, and spirit, we praise you. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, or any illness. We pray for those we name now. Gary A., Mark A., Amanda B., Karen F., Claire M., Phil N., Rachel P., Nick R., Ken R., Sarah and family, Jim T., Skip T, Rita W, Sherry W, Tracy, Cassie, and Baxter. We pray for those whose names we silently lift to you now. May they all know your comfort and healing, light and love. And together we pray, God in your God mercy. In your mercy, hear us. Supporting one, for all who volunteer and work for the vitality of this congregation, we praise you. Strengthen and encourage all who serve in worship, who lead ministries, who preach and preside, help on projects, those who maintain our building and grounds, give generosity, generously, those who work in the office and work long distance, and all who serve with generous hearts. And together we pray, God, in your, God mercy. in your mercy, hear us. Risen one, we thank you for those who have shaped your church and shared your gospel. Through the witness of your saints, continue to inspire us with their hope until we all are gathered at your eternal feast. And together we pray, God, in your mercy, hear us. Into your hands today and forever, we commit all for whom we pray, 
trusting in the grace made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and friend. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Go I'm ahead also and with you. And, thank you. And go ahead and unmute yourselves and share God's peace with each other. Peace, everybody. Peace, uh, peace everybody. Peace to everyone. Peace to everyone. Peace to the Lord be with everyone. Peace, Elsie. Peace, Elsie. Peace, 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 we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. Praise. Please mute yourselves. We thank and praise you, merciful God, for Jesus, who emptied himself and became a servant to all. He took upon himself our sins and suffered for our sakes. And he was wounded for our transgressions and he was killed to break the power of sin and death. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his friends, those who loved him and those who would betray him. And as they ate, Jesus took bread and gave thanks. And he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body, it's given for you. Do this, remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. And it's shed for you and it's shed for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this, remember me. Renew us, O oh God, as we share this bread and cup. Mend our weary spirits, fill our hearts with your love. Open our eyes to see the meaning and purpose of Christ's death and resurrection. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Most holy in the name of Jesus, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please unmute yourselves. And as we are gathered by one into the Holy Spirit, let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom, your kingdom, your kingdom to come, where we will be done. Please go ahead and mute yourselves. Beloveds, even as we are communing in our homes, we are together. Here is bread, here is wine, here is Jesus. Please share the body and blood of, of Christ with the ones you are with using these words. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. If you're alone, then please commune with me now. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Receive these words of blessing. When bad things happen, remember that God is not testing you. God is with you. In the storm that is this pandemic, remember that God will lead us out of it. And as you go about your days, may you see God at work in the world 
as God has been since the very first day of creation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A few announcements this morning. Remember that you can worship with friends and family by just sharing the worship Zoom link with them. Uh, there will be no Dwelling in the Word Bible study this Thursday. Um, on this week on Thursday, I said there would be, but I forgot that um, I'll be attending Bishop's Convocation this week. So uh, no Bible study on Thursday morning. The best fundraiser you will never have to attend. Last year at this time, the Outreach Committee raised funds to purchase gift cards for families affected by the pandemic in our community. We raised over $4,000 for gift cards that were distributed to Roseburg schools to help families in need. The Methodist Church also raised funds for this project and together we raised about $7,000 for our schools in our community. And the leaders from the schools were deeply grateful for our efforts and our generosity. But who knew, right, a year later, we'd still be living in a pandemic world. And families would still be needing assistance. So here we are, once again, raising funds for this project. This year, Helping Hands is committed to providing $2,000 in matching funds for the first $2,000 raised. We are delighted this year to be joined by not only the Methodist Church, but also by St. George's Episcopal Church this year. So, you don't have to get dressed up, you don't have to go anywhere, you don't have to eat anything, you don't have to buy anything. You just stay home in your comfy jammies and slippers and simply write a check and mail it to the church or drop it by the church during office hours, earmarked pandemic response, or go to the church website and give online indicating pandemic response. This campaign will run the entire month of October, then the gift cards will be distributed to the schools in November. So Faith needs to raise at least $2,000 for the matching funds. You all were incredibly generous last year, and it's our hope that you will once again support this important ministry to families in our community and support the child development specialists in our schools who do this difficult work with limited funds. On November 7th is All Saints Day. Again this year, we will honor those who have died with a memorial video. Um, you can submit a photo or two of loved ones that you would like to honor and have remembered. Please include their name. Um, we can reuse last year's photos if you'd like. Just send Barb a quick email and let her know that. New photos can be emailed to Barb as she prefers them in a JPEG format. But if you need to have your photos scanned, and you're, you, then you're welcome to bring it to the church office, and Jackie can do that for you. Plus, it will give you the opportunity to meet her. Uh, the church office hours are Tuesday through Friday from 10 to 2. And there's more information about this in the, that was in the Friday email. Are there any other announcements this morning? Just unmute yourself and hop in there. Any other announcements? All right, well, I don't hear any, so go in peace. Live God's love in the world.